so i'm winding down with natural language processing uh so concluding let's start with this quote which is a, a really favorite quote of mine uh reading books is my mm, hob not just my hobby it's uh, it, it's way more than that and i have also given a TED, tedx talk on it um and this quote has always stayed with me you know it it says how amazing book is we take it for granted it's something which is just a flat object made up with trees and it's just some ink okay but once you start reading it you are inside the mind of another person and it is not just one possible such person it could be a person who is 5000 years old it could be a person uh, who is an amazing expert in a sub domain which you care about or something else so you see the the accessibility to knowledge and experiences becomes so much more because of book you know if you want to learn we generally learn from our own experiences or the stories we hear from people we know or their experiences but with a book accessible data to learn from becomes instead of just our own life so i am right now 33 years old instead of having just 33 years worth of data to learn from i can reflect on the entire humanity's history it books break shackles of time something which is permanent something which is eternal something which will remain true no matter uh, the time something which is impactful and it is constantly growing knowledge is infinite whatever we know it is going to only grow even more and more we need to keep reinventing and encapsulating all that is a book book which is a place holder for text text which is nothing but our natural language thing which with, uh, with which we have conquered the world if we take a look at map of entire human knowledge this is what nlp data is all about so many diverse things and its impact has developed our entire world if we think about knowledge of engineering if we have a llm which is amazing at uh, engineering we have a it's an amazing machine which has an amazing knowledge which can be applied to anything we want so nlp as a whole is actually a really great uh, uh topic and in this topic uh i was kind of like winding down on top of it for my tensor plus certification so i've covered around essential part which i would say around 80% of from zero to mastery nlp course but in that course i hit a few snacks i have built a video i have actually already recorded a video on it and its summary is this so summary of that video was uh, things i observed from that course that there was some bit of wrong science so check out this video in my uh, channel and i go into more detail here so i went into nlp i tried finishing it and there were a few things i discovered so the problems which uh, were still being worked on in nlp were still not uh, real life problems and there were some bit of missing knowledge i thought it should be good if we complement it with coursera tensor flow nlp specialization course from that uh, specialization so uh, you know these two things i kind of like realized so i have done these two things you know i'm going to uh, choose a competition which is of a real scale of data and for that this is an amazing competition to kind of like help keep track of how how good is my learning if we solve a old kaggle problem it's already outdated it's easily solved we need to check it constantly with what is the state of the art so this is the competition evaluate student summaries from a text student have written summaries and how good they are and everything so this is just a starting point we can go much beyond just evaluating summaries with uh, a very high quality natural language processing we could even guide student we could deconstruct it to any higher depth but as a starting point just a num numeric prediction is a great starting point so i thought for uh, finishing up the the whole knowledge and actually applying this knowledge it makes sense to take it to a real competition so that was for nlp and then i'm i'm just going to take uh, <clears throat> i'm just going to do similar problem for 
the next thing as well which is time series uh, time series data processing so going back to zero to mastery tensorflow certification course and my goal of cracking tensorflow developer certificate this is the status now computer vision um, um i can do these hands on decently uh, tensorflow is good enough and then nlp still i haven't worked on the scale problem of real life data so if you check kaggle competition in this it was a dog breed classification images were fine data was i think in gbs but problem was still simplistic so it is a good getting started competition just for beginners and same in nlp the classification was still good getting started for beginners so take a complex real scale thing this is the old competition so its solutions are available so it's uh, i'm still going to uh, i will have help and i still can aim to do late submission and actually check how good i am and then this is the competition which is right now live so this is the uh, uh, live competition uh, of harvard medical school classifying from eeg data seizures and all of these details so this 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 was the whole nlp thing i went through course and i went through this section and this was the conclusion so in that in the nlp part there is just as a conceptual thing let me just add a few things okay so first thing to know is this really interesting research so what does this research says it is saying by 2026 we are going to run out of high quality text data right now 2024 so in next 2 to 3 years it will not be about just blind collection of data the way we are doing right now so soon there is going to be a time where intelligent where being smart it's not about having brute force dumb large volume of data but it's about training it well so we are going to run out of text data soon so uh, for this nlp we kind of like need to go beyond just this you know blind uh, training with the whatever data we can find we need to go into understanding them better so that's why this this course even though uh it it gets to hands on pretty quickly but i do think the knowledge knowledge level uh, which these courses go into for developer certification tensor flow they are quite shallow so we need to <laughs> we need to do this hands on things build our own understanding and then go beyond that so for natural language processing step 1 is what we convert the number to a word oh sorry <laughs> wow i said exactly opposite so in natural language processing what we do is we convert the word to a number and it feels weird it it, it feels that our brain doesn't do that check out this video so in this video it talks about map of the brain this brain surface it is actually uh, more than 2 hours stories were told to people and their brain mapping and blood flow uh, FM, through fmri scans was being tracked and through stories telling stories and which part of brain was reacting to which part of the story they have mapped brains uh, activation to words here so this whole language which we understand which comes so easy to us inside the brain it it it's mapped into groups the part which is in this light green these words correspond to stuff related to visual data stuff which is in red corresponds to stuff which is in related to social data okay and uh, as you can see it's generally with social data there is also crime and that's why you have this murder and this purple thing which seems like the more the negative shade of the social aspect so you see depending on how we visualize there is a proper mapping of meaning of the word they are grouped together by similarities if you see here so we don't know how our brain does it how we don't know how all of our brains does it everyone's brain is different number of neurons are different experiences are different how the data is going to get processed is different but through our experiences we have learned the meaning and to encode that meaning into word we start by converting a word to a number which does not have meaning and then we want to include meaning into it which is what the embedding part was all about 
So for embedding, we have, uh, we can either uh, do it. Embedding is nothing but in that number, we have embedded the meaning as well, just like our brain has. So the similar words are grouped together. So whenever we hear anything, our brain is able to process through either knowing the word or through similarities or something. And it's the exact same thing. We are doing it in a numerical format and these are uh, embeddings called as glove embedding. Stanford Research Project is what had done it. it. They were very useful embeddings. So it maps the entire data. So it has used the knowledge of Wikipedia and then a lot of common uh, data uh, scrape from internet is what is being used to train. And then when you map it into meaning, it kind of comes like this. Okay. So now the word, uh, it's unfortunately. So this glove embedding, it, it depending on the word, it's all mapped into here around uh, 20 clusters. And the meaning of a single word is of 50 length numerical vector. So each number is an integer, not integer, sorry, a float value. So it has 50 dimensions in which the meaning is embedded. So you see here 50 dimensions. In our brain also, there are some number of dimensions in which the meaning is embedded. Like our brain, we are going to do it in this way. We chose 50, but you know, higher the number of dimensions, more meaning we can include in it. So different, different dimensions learn different things. We don't know what goes where, but it is learned automatically. That is the point here. So connecting how our brain does some things. We don't know that, but following the same process in NLP, we have been able to map these things and extract words which have similar meaning and group them together. It automatically happens. So if you check green here comes around, you know, there is some pattern into these green things. Then in this orange, there is some pattern. There is one interesting pattern here. So in these area, all the names are encoded here. So just like here, green was for visual, red was for social. Here different colors are mapped and we have an answer. So if we do this for a domain of let's say science, that's why I showed slides, right? <laughs> so if we do this for domain of science, whether it is art or social science or science or anything, all of this text data will be less than 100 GB, I'm sure. I think 100 GB is too much. So we can map it to appropriate number of dimensions and do it at a scale and which is in a better way. And then we have become better than the current NLP standard. Don't be just chasing the blind, you know, just give more data, just put more compute. I don't think that is the way. I think we should be spending time into trying to understand these things better. But I did not find this approach in most of the resources where just doing the code and it's just blindly some doing even competitions was the norm. And I don't think we should do it like that. Just spend a bit of time connect it to neuroscience, connect it to our brain, understand what intelligence is at a deeper uh, level, and then realize that deep learning is a way for us to understand this text. And through that, we have access to everything that text can write about. So we have a, we can build a chatbot which has a deep understanding of all of it which no human has had until now. So that is the power of natural language processing. That's how amazing it can be. What can a, a, a visual chatbot do? At most it can draw maybe. Of course, it can also do physics simulation and then it will be impactful. But natural language, the data is small, easy to process and potentials are infinite. So to do that, we need to go beyond blind experimenting. We need to go into understanding things as well. So that's what I did. I have I have uh, tied my loose ends, at least for now, even though it was still simplistic. I'm going to apply my knowledge to this competition, evaluate student summaries, and then I'm going to truly aim to finish and get a good rank in this time series classification. So for computer vision, NLP and EEG, I would have attempted one decent competition for each of them according to 2023.
not 2023 2024 now <laughs> so then my whole thing would have uh, finished so and just in a uh, three four weeks i'll give the certification i want to build a deeper knowledge right not just to blind certification um, so yeah that was my status for uh, tying up with nlp section